So, uh, but for people who don't know, Kairos is a, v a venture fund, and you do a lot of different things, tackle the world's greatest challenges, and cyber suddenly has been thrust into that category in a, in a big way. And I'm, I'm wondering, do you have the answers? Do you, any of your companies have the answers? I mean, look, this has been a scary wake-up call, but probably not in the way that you guys are thinking, right? I mean, everyone has been asking me, what should companies be doing to protect themselves against these kind of cyber attacks? And I think one of the big takeaways from the pipeline attack recently, the subway attack, the meat uh, industry attack, is that this is there's only so much private companies can do. I mean, there's basic stuff we all got to get done. We got to upgrade our antiquated server systems, store data better, et cetera. But I mean, Joe, this isn't any different from someone in a foreign country launching a physical attack on an oil pipeline here in the United States. And the reason we don't see that happening on a daily basis is because the U.S. government and the U.S. military have put such strong methods of deterrence in place that people know that if a foreign state or a private rogue actor acting on behalf of a state or as a terrorist group shut down a U.S. pipeline, the consequences would be severe, right? I mean, even in the best case scenario, these, these hackers are sophisticated actors, right? I mean, they're using day zero exploits that even Apple and Microsoft aren't aware of. And these pipelines, they're not running on janky security systems. I mean, these guys have some of the top of the line cybersecurity defense systems out there, right? But just like physical infrastructure, there's only so much you can do to protect against every possible threat. And so as much as we need to get our companies up to par, this is gonna have some pretty profound implications on what the president is willing to say to these countries like Russia, when you have actors essentially committing acts of terror on key U.S. infrastructure um, here across the country. So there's so much, uh, you know, you just said a lot, a lot of ramifications. I'd like, to, I'd like to figure out what we need to do, whether we need to confront Russia more, whether this is a test of the, of the new administration here in this country. But it, it, as we've pointed out earlier, it is dependent on crypto. But do, do we blame crypto and do we, do we regulate crypto? Do we outlaw crypto? Is, is that, do we kill the messenger or does the freedom inherent in decentralized currencies it, it, we know that this can happen from that. Do we accept that, or is that the way you stop it, or do you do something else to stop it? So I might be the only guy in the Valley who is bearish on crypto. <laughs> um, I, I think this is opening up a whole plethora of issues uh, across the world, and I do think that what's going to happen over time is once the speculation benefit of these cryptocurrencies slows and foreign governments move to digital currency, that will start to get regulated much more heavily, right? I mean, once you can start to say to people that you're gonna regulate cryptocurrency because the vast majority of it is used for dark, dark money uses, that's gonna have a pretty significant impact on a lot of the other kind of speculation around the industry. So I think, again, the crypto is just one piece of it. If people don't see severe consequences, I mean, I think it was 2008 when the Secretary of Defense put out a memo to Congress saying, an act of cyber warfare will be treated like warfare. I mean, this is scary stuff, but these are really serious attacks. And the next 50 years of our lives aren't going to be worrying about a, you know, an aircraft carrier off the coast of the United States. It's worrying about an actor in China or Russia shutting down our power grid, our oil grids, our, our, you know, our access to the food supply. Um, and those are real issues. And it's going to require, obviously, a lot of private sector investment into the space but it's going to require a lot of government intervention as well so that people know that that's no different than coming in and attacking a, like a bike. Ankur, thanks. And uh, we'll have you back because it's not <laughs> obviously not going away. Great to have you on this morning. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.